Hey everyone, I'm Victor Frost, and this is Steven Universe Universe, the show where we talk about the universe of Steven Universe. It's Steven Bomb Week, and that means we're not doing any of the usual news and reviews. We're going right to analysis. So, if you have yet to watch the episode Rose's Scabbard, now is your chance to pause this video, go watch that one, then come back. Don't worry, we'll wait. In the meantime, this is your spoiler alert. Beyond this point, it's no holds bar. So, new episode, new lore. Let's see what we learned. First of all, wow, what a feels episode this one was. I mean, recently we've gotten episodes where it's been focused on Amethyst or Garnet. It's just, it's been a while and now it's Pearl's turn. As a big Pearl fan, I loved episodes like uh, Coach Steven and Space Race because we really got to look at Pearl beyond a panicky OCD kind of character. And it's great when we get to see her full range of emotions. And I am so glad we got another one. This was great. Um, okay, so enough Pearl jamming. Let's get to the actual episode itself. One of the first things we learn in this episode is that when gems die, they aren't killed, they're broken. When studying a foreign culture, which is essentially what the gems are, it's important to pay close attention to their word choice. It can really tell you a lot. In this case, it is once again a reminder that their physical bodies are not important. Their actual gems are their truest form. We also learn from the size of the weapons strewn across the field that when gems engaged in battle, they did so not just in gem on gem combat, but in fusion on fusion battle as well. The size of the axe Garnet picked up looked like it would be pretty likely a good fit for a fusion Sugalite size. Speaking of Garnet, the way she and Pearl remember the battle is pretty important. For Garnet, it was a maelstrom of death and destruction. For Pearl, yeah, yeah, whatever, we won! It was a glorious battle against insurmountable odds. And when we won, Kalos himself came down and congratulated us, assuring us a place in Stovakor. Uh... So, I'm, I'm a bit of a Star Trek fan. <laughs> Anyways, Pearl seems to view the battle with a rather incredible degree of fondness, whereas Garnet looks at it as a tragedy, arguably the more neutral of the two positions. How we interpret events has a lot to do with the context we view them in. Now that can be the context of surrounding events, our own thoughts, feelings, emotions, conceptions, biases, everything. Now with all that in mind, Let's look at her relationship with Rose. We've kinda known since Indirect Kiss that Pearl holds Rose in a bit of a special light. Whenever she talks about her, her language becomes, if you'll forgive the pun, flowery. But okay, fine. Rose was their leader and Pearl has always been a, you know, bit of a poetics type of person, so it wasn't too big of a departure from the norm. In this episode though, we see that Pearl really loved her. Now, you shippers can just relax, sit down. Once again, I do not mean romantic love. In ancient Greek, there are four words to describe the different types of love a person can feel for another person. The first one is called agape, which is an unconditional love that lets you look beneath the surface of everyone and accept them for who they are, irrespective of their flaws or faults or shortcomings. This is the type of love we should feel for everyone. Eros is a passionate romantic love. It's the love at first sight, take my breath away, hanging by a moment here with you kind of love. It is strong and burning and fiery. Philia is more of a loyalty kind of thing than the love we're typically used to discussing. It's kind of a generic friendship sort of love that has a lot of dependency on utility. Like, you know that BFF you made in that class a few semesters ago that you haven't really interacted with in a year outside of Facebook? It's that kind of thing. 
Finally, there's storge, a familial kind of love. This is the kind of love a married couple would feel towards each other, or a parent and a child, or two very, very, very best friends. This is the kind of love that makes you say, I will take a bullet for you without any hesitation or regret. No problem. This love runs deep, it runs true, and it is 100% bona fide unconditional. Without a doubt, Pearl has Storge love for Rose, and the feeling was probably mutual. She was Rose's sole confidant, the person she could apparently trust the very most. Their relationship was special and unique, without a doubt. And ultimately, this is what slowly kills Pearl throughout the episode. See, when you take pride in a sort of uniqueness, having someone tell you that it isn't, or in Pearl's case, that her confidence with Rose didn't go as deep as she thought it did, it can really hurt. And when, be when she's forced to confront the fact that Lion, this seemingly random animal that Steven just sort of adopted, has a deep connection with Rose, maybe deeper than her own, it forced her to face the revelation that, well, maybe she wasn't so special after all. This caused a fundamental collapse in a worldview that she held for more than 5,000 years, causing her to lash out at the others and at Steven. Even when she was running away from Steven, she couldn't stand the sight of Lion because he was a literal representation of this feeling of invalidation. But Pearl's relationship with Rose also casts a new light on the song Strong in a Real Way. In the second verse of the chorus, And I want to inspire you, I want to be your rock, and when I talk it lights a fire in you seems to echo her own feelings about Rose and that she wants to take on that sort of role for Steven. This also shows something else. For as much of a jabberjaw as Steven is, he apparently didn't tell the gems about Rose's tape. I mean, if he did, they obviously would have asked where it came from and then he would have had to tell them about Lion. So that poses a question. Did Steven simply just forget or is he too keeping secrets? It's probably the former, but that does bring up the question, if Steven had told him about the tape and Lion earlier, how would that have affected the upcoming and present events? Something to think about. And that's what we learned today on Steven Universe Universe. Join us tomorrow where we dig into the message. I'm Victor Frost, and I'll see you tomorrow.